You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody. That music means it is time once again for Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Also, the final program for all you on-demand folks of our broadcast week here. My name, of course, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as from the ever-engaging, at least we tend to think so, Options Insider Radio Network. Mind you, if you like what you hear, do throw some stars or review or like, whatever platform you're listening it to on, whatever they allow you to do. It does help new people continue to discover the content. You can also go on the App Store for our app if you listen that way and throw some stars that way. It all helps people find their way to the content. We all know there's new people out there, so they need a place to turn. Help them out. Help your fellow trader out. Some stars, some reviews out there. Helps them beat a path to this door. And of course, if you don't want your broadcast week to end with volatility views, and hey, who can blame you? You want more content afterwards? Like, let's say, I don't know, options oddities. You also like a good pro Q&A or two. Maybe you want to hit that button and get access to over 200, (laughs) 200 hours of exclusive pro content man we are just bombarding you folks there on the pro side as well as of course live access to this and everything else we do as well as of course you get your name in the hat for the pro trading crate those are awesome don't tell the rock lobster he's very jealous of you folks on that front the options insider.com slash pro is the place to go to learn more about all of that fun speaking of fun we got a whole bunch in store for you today it was an interesting week a fed week a lot to break down. Joining me to help me break down the mad week of volatility that was and indeed still is, is none other than our old friend, the greasiest of meatballs himself, Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. Mr. Meatball, welcome back to Ye Old Volatility View, sir. Good to be here, Mark. I'm glad uh, we got a lot to discuss. We do have a lot to discuss. So let's get to it. A little bit of the old volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the Volatility Review. All right, everybody. That music means it is time to break down the week that was and indeed still is about trading and trending and analysis and unusual activity, all sorts of fun perspectives. And coming into the start of the show, uh, the markets are, are struggling to find a path, find a direction. It seemed like right before the show, they had all coalesced into one direction, not the band, but the markets. <laughs> they were all green for the most part. They just ticked, at least the NASDAQ just ticked. 
slightly red now, so we can't say it's all green to kick off the show and end the week here. It's mostly green, and even still, not robustly green. S&P up about two-tenths of a percent. The Dow up a little bit less than that, about 0.15%. Like we said, the NASDAQ flirting with slightly red territory here to end the week. So a bit of a mixed bag to end the week. Of course, that's on the heels of an effusively green week. We are still hanging out well north of the 4,400 level in the S&P. Of course, if you've been watching the markets at all for the last couple of months, you know we were vacillating around 4,100 for quite some time, actually danced below it for a little bit. So to be now well north of 4,400, that's quite the run, including a lot of that coming this week on the heel of Powell and company. A lot of people thought maybe that would spook the market. We saw a little bit of vol starting to percolate, starting to creep back in, leading into the Fed, which is to be expected. I toyed with unloading the last of my uh, my remnants of my downside in VIX. I did not. We'll get to that saga a little bit later here on the show. And then, of course, post-Powell. Powell tried to inject a little bit of hawkishness in out there, but it definitely didn't resonate with the market. The market's heard no more hike this time. Maybe hikes in the future, but apparently uh, we're whistling past that graveyard and on to other things because the market was fully green all week long the rest of the week. So a lot of green on the screen meant vol. Mostly came in yet again. And when we kicked off the show today, VIX was back below a 14 handle, 1380. When we commenced operations here on the show, listeners, that puts it down exactly a point from where it was this time last week. So heading into last weekend, we were hanging out near a 15, heading into a Fed week. All that gone now and an extra point on top of it. Uh, VVIX, though, the vol of vol, still looking a little bit frothy. Maybe some of that having to do with some of those puts on the downside there. Ball, after all, in the S&P is at about the first or second percentile for the year. So the vol is anemic. The skew, not quite there. The skew is at about the 27th percentile for the year. So a little bit more juice in the puts, a little bit more juice in the skew than we are seeing in just the straight up vol out there. So intriguing stuff to be found. Maybe that's one of the reasons why VVIX itself is at about a 93 right now, up about eight points. Something's a little bit frothier out there right now in terms of nasdaq vol vol q it's at an 18 even up about a quarter of a point so kind of almost unched on the week out there so a lot to unpack uh, mr meatball obviously an interesting week a fed week so that usually means some paper that usually means a little bit of volatility it doesn't always mean a, a just a series of green days but that's kind of what we had this week as well so uh, let's start there what were you expecting heading into the fed announcement I think a lot of us expected a little bit of that vol to creep in, which we saw earlier in the week. And then what were your thoughts on the announcement itself and just the nonstop rally ho we've seen pretty much ever since? Yeah, that rip was something else um, over the last few days. It's been, you know, we really saw volatility starting to creep really high. I mean, we the VIX closed on the on its highs, uh, even as the market was was rallying. In fact, if you looked at uh, the uh, a tick chart of SPX and and the VIX against each other. Um, VIX was going up when SPX was rallying and then calming down when it stopped. One of the reasons why, as we're talking now, SP you know the Nasdaq looks like it's going to go red. S P might might be red end up red today. But one of the reasons why um, VIX is down, VIX is down seven seventy five cents, uh, is that you know. That that kind of rip uh, isn't happening today, and so what what yesterday felt like was traders selling stock and buying calls, which is going to cause upside vol to go higher. Traders that were short being forced to cover or protect with calls, and then FOMO traders jumping in buying going along calls, uh, all of which caused VIX to just rip, even as the market was going higher. A lot of people weren't sure what was going on. Um, and uh, and I think that's uh, that that's kind of what we saw this week. Today is going to be interesting. Um, you know, we if we end the day down, I expect VIX to continue to drop. But watch what happens as the day progresses. If we do start to rip higher, if the buy the dip crowd steps in and and starts to rip this thing, then you're going to see VIX go start going up again. Um, we are. This is. Very end of dot com bubble bubble type trading here that we're that we're looking at, folks, or the end of the oil rally, kind of kind of stuff that we're seeing uh, in 
uh, the S and P and in the Nasdaq 100. End of dot com bubble. Interesting, strong words, sir. Intriguing stuff. Yeah. Well, your June, your June puts. Uh, did you dump the rest of them? <laughs> yes, I did. I did. I, I resisted, uh, and I know you were. I know you were talking. You were whispering in my ear earlier in the week, saying you should probably get rid of the rest of these. And you know, I was leaning that way. I, I we'll get there. We'll get there in a little bit. But uh, there was a saga right. unfolding with all of that fun. But they're looking pretty robust right now. But you know, you're talking about call volume. People are are saying that same thing. In fact, our our regular guest on the show, Scott Nation, is just tweeting out right now. Actually, something along those same line saying uh, looking at the data right now he, he of course has his ball decks and his skew decks and his tail and his call decks they actually measure the call skew as well and he says all you need to know about the s&p option space today is nobody wants any options other than upside call options and you know it's it's hard to disagree with that notion if you've ridden this market up right now if you're feeling maybe it's a little bit frothy a little bit top heavy maybe you just want to sleep at night vol is anemic upside calls nobody wants them except for today they're starting to bit them up Uh, but you could see an argument for maybe a little bit of stock substitution here mr meatball what are your thoughts on that yeah i mean i think that's that you've got shorts that are protecting themselves and then you've got the fomo crowd in FOMO crowd. Aren't they the done? Haven't crowd. they been beaten to death since uh, 2021? Or are they, I guess they never went away, did they? The FOMO crowd. <laughs> There's always a, a FOMO crowd to be found out there. Listen, are you part of that? Are you part of that FOMO crowd? Are you feeding into this whole FOMO effect out there? In which case, you know, a little bit of lower vol, not terribly crazy bid for the calls means you got some upside chance. You like stock substitution here? Are you maybe taking some risk off the table and letting the dice fly to the upside? Or are you just... Uh, you're just loading up on some upside to keep the party going. I'm curious. Hit us up. Let us know what you folks are up to out there. Uh, in terms of what folks are up to on the volatility surface this week, I think you can probably guess mostly down. Whole curve kind of shifting down yet again. That front portion of the curve are really coming in. We still have a decent gap between the cash and that front June future, but it has come in. It's about 0.8 now. Whereas we were talking about a couple of weeks ago, it was a point and a half or more. Uh, So it has come in roughly cut in half, still has a bit of a ways to go. Uh, But that June future has come in, obviously, as well, down about two and a half points since our last show, which, again, we are going back now a couple of weeks. We didn't do a full vol views proper last week. Luckily, because we like you folks, we did do kind of an extra credit hit with the uh, once and future Dr. Vic. So check that out. I actually went pretty long. You got a pretty much a half hour show anyway. So <laughs> you guys got pretty much a, a decent ball of views last week, even if it wasn't live. But for all you on-demand folks, you didn't notice any difference anyway. So right in your feed as usual. Uh, the July future now going back a bit down about two and a quarter points from our last live show. So a lot of that front portion of the curve coming in. We look a little bit farther out. We go out to, let's say, next year, early next year. You're looking at a future in February, a little bit shy of 22 right now, about 2180. That seems to be where the where the curve kind of tops out right now. So intriguing for Mr. Meatball, sir. What's your take on the vol surface this week, sir? Uh, yeah, I mean the it's definitely flattened. <laughs> uh, I think it's interesting that uh, July and August are. Um, you know, when when you get past the first month, July and August are not overly steep. There's this and Sep, Ock, Nove are all kind of sitting on top of each other. Back into the curve is still pretty big. Um, there's an opportunity there. I mean, we're trade the VIX is 1370 and the and the October future is basically 20. Um that that there's some there's definitely some some risk premium priced in here, folks. Might be an interesting time to throw together a little flash poll for our audience here about are they looking at things like stock substitution right now? Maybe maybe I will do just that. But first, we've got to get into some of the big VIX mothership options out there. Today, actually looking pretty robust out there, listeners. Pretty Pretty action-packed out there. Already half a million contracts on the tape. Exactly, actually, right now. 500,000 exactly, which is kind of interesting. Uh, The ADB also looking pretty robust at... uh, Looks like about 850, up about 26,000 contracts on the tape right now. In terms of the top size positions, what is open out there? For size right now in VIX options. Again, you know, we've seen a lot of downside. We were saying this on the show, our last live show a couple of weeks ago. 
are there going to be more puts <laughs> in the top 10? And the answer is apparently still no. We are still hanging out at the 8 to 2 calls over puts in our top 10 size positions in VIX options. Read into that what you will, listeners. Always a bit of an intriguing indicator to me. Uh, but uh, number 10, it cost you 197,000 contracts to break into the top 10 in VIX right now. So nearly 200,000 to break into the top 10 in VIX. Usually it's around 150 or so. So that's actually pretty hefty. That shows there's some OI out there. And that's that's the case. Over 15 million options open right now in VIX. That's a lot. Usually we see 9, maybe 10 million. So people are coming to play in VIX right now, which is kind of interesting. It's just all in the calls, <laughs> which is also interesting. Again, number 10, 197,000 of the AUG 25s. Number 9, 199,000 of the June 25s. Number 8, our first of two puts on the list, 203,000 of the June 16 puts. Number 7, 212,000 of the July 25s. Number 6, 243,000 of the AUG 60s. Number 5, 261,000 of the June 27 calls. Number 4, 275,000 of my old friend, the June 15 puts. Number three, 295,000 of the July 23s. Interesting strike. Interesting month. Interesting across the board for those. Number two, 336,000 of the SEP 60s. Remember, that's part of that. I think it was a one by three spread we talked about on the show about a month ago. And then the top position out there still in VIX options, 338,000 of the june 30s that's of course part of that call vertical that we've talked about many times on the show in the past one thing you don't see at least in the top 10 right now listeners is the other half of that the june 40s they have unwound some of that so i guess they came to take some of their profits on the short leg of the vertical and letting the long leg ride harder to take the loss on the long leg i don't know why that's still open they want to keep Keep their options open in case we get a nice pop in VIX over the next week. They want to keep those options alive. Either way, number one, still the June 30s. Hard to believe that option already pretty much coming to a close. Seems like we've been talking about that June 30, 40 for forever here on the show here. But we are coming to the tail end of that saga. Speaking, Mr. Meatball, of the tail ends of the saga, we will now talk about what you were talking about at the start of the show there. Yes, the, the saga of the June 15 puts. By the way, do me a favor. Don't look at the notes. This kind of surprised me because I, I knew this trade when we first noticed it on the show and talked about it, that first 100,000 lot that got us intrigued by these. I knew it was a while back, but I was surprised when I actually looked up the date this morning, exactly when it went up. Take a guess when that 100,000 lot of these June 15 puts for nine cents went up that we talked about. And also, what if you day? If, if, what day or month, and then also, if you want to make it more fun, add in where you think VIX was at the time. Uh, let's see. They all right. So June's been around a while. I'll I'll go out on a limb and I'll say I don't know March twelfth, and and I want to say the VIX was like twenty five. March twelfth of this year. I'm assuming you're mean, right? Yeah. Okay. No. Try October twentieth. Oh wow! It was all. I was thinking it was January, maybe February. I, I thought it was this year. I did not think it was that far back. But I remember what got us going. But we saw these going up for nine cents, and we thought that was a horrible fill. <laughs> we could do better, and that's how we got into all this pennying this guy and and really kind of being jerks here on the show, putting up a bunch for seven cents and eight cents <laughs> just to kind of annoy this person. That's that's how petty we are here on the show, listeners. But that's what started off this whole saga. This massive block of one hundred thousand. Of these June 15 puts, lifting the offer for nine cents. Take a guess where VIX was, sir, at the time. In October, it was probably 29. Yeah, 29.61 when oh, these nice. puts went up. So that I remember when these went up, they seemed like such a distant notion. And that's why. Because VIX was kissing 30, and it was October. <laughs> June seemed like I mean, it might have been an eternity away. So when we put these on, they were truly... Just a ridiculous lark that they just seemed like they were so far out into the future that they would never come to fruition. And I don't, I don't know about you, Mr. Meatball. We have a lot of different accounts here that we trade stuff in. So I, I completely forgot about these, quite frankly. <laughs> and it wasn't until... Until I brought them up? Well, until I saw, I'd say a couple of weeks ago, when we saw that next leg down in Vol. And then all of a sudden, I saw one of our accounts. I was like, what is this weird little surge of green in this random account? And I said, oh, it's those puts. <laughs> My first thought was, oh, I forgot about these. And then B, I was like, I forgot how many of these things I actually bought. <laughs> I was, let's say I was committed to the gimmick to use some wrestling vernacular. 
So they started lighting up. So, of course, I, I wanted to have some more content for the show. I started working some. Uh, they were trading around a quarter. We bought them for like seven cents. So that was already a great trade over 3x. I uh, started looking at them there. and I said, you know what? Let's let's make it fun. If you're going to do this in for a penny, in for a pound. So I started working some at a half a buck. And lo and behold, I sold those last week. I got filled at a half a buck. And I said, well, I can get the rest off. But let's what fun is that? Let's try to work the balance at some ridiculous. I said, let's let's go double. Let's go in for a penny in for a pound. So I went for a full dollar even was hanging out there for a while. And then, of course, we saw last week we kind of settled a little bit shy of the 15 handle. So they were looking pretty good. And then, of course, coming into the start of this week, they were, they were not looking so great because ball was starting to percolate back in. I remember you were even saying at the beginning of the week, Mr. Meatball, you thought those puts had had their, had, had their say, had had their day in the sun, and it was time to close them out. And I could honestly say I didn't necessarily disagree with you. Uh, all indicators looking into the Fed, vol starting to creep in, VIX starting to creep up a little bit. Didn't seem like there was a lot of room left for a lot of upside on these June 15 puts, but I resisted. I said, you know what? I'm not going to sell these. And they, they got kind of clobbered right back down. They were trading 80 plus cents not that long ago, 90, almost 90 cents. They got clobbered all the way back down to about 50 cents again, which again, still was a great level. I, I had sold those initially at 50 cents. But I said, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold on. I'm not going to sell the rest at the same level. We'll see what I can get for these. If that ends up coming back to bite me, say la vie. Uh, so I worked them and I did. I brought my offer back down to a more realistic level. I said, let's, let's bring it down a little bit. I'm not going to get them off for a buck. I said, how about let's try 85 cents? And they were still looking bad even yesterday. They were trading back in the mid-50s again. I said, I don't know. Maybe this is a little bit too optimistic. But I resisted again. I said, I'm not going to hit this bid for 55 cents. I'm going to wait. And then lo and behold, right before showtime, Mr. Meatball, the last remaining vestige of my June 15 puts now gone for 85 cents, sir. Is that not ridiculous? You're talking... Over 10x. I bought a bunch of these for seven cents. <laughs> nice little trade. This is ridiculously stupid. Kind of fun. Makes for good content on the show. Uh, also nice that I forgot about those. <laughs> I would have yes. probably, I would have probably done something with them. What did you end up doing with yours, sir? Yeah, I, I mean, I started selling mine in a quarter, uh, and then sold some. I did sell some at fifty cents. That was nice. That was a nice trade. Um, and, you know, uh, the, that's the power of, of listening to this show. You know, if you, if you listen to this show, you had a week to buy those, a week before they started to perk up. And if you traded along with us, the, the, co- the amount of money you made just on these puts would pay for your Option Insider Pro subscription for how long, Mark? If you bought, let's say... Even it, let's say you bought twenty of them for seven cents, one hundred and forty bucks, and you sold them at an average price of oh god, let's get, say get many years thirty five cents. <laughs> you get many years of the pro for that. Yeah, you're ma- you're making five hundred sixty dollars on that. Uh, you're doing pretty good. Yeah, you're you you're you're getting you you everybody who did that that trade that listens to ball views. If you are not a pro member, take your dollars and go buy it now. Quit being cheap. Well, I appreciate Mark and I are here to make you money. <laughs> I appreciate that plug, sir. But it was a yes, it was a fun go around. We do talk a lot about that kind of stuff on the show that comes up after this. Listener, it's called Options Oddities. We find lots of little nuggets like that, and we usually don't forget about them because they're a little bit more near dated than <laughs> going out over half a year. <laughs> but a fun one, and it kind of just. I did look, by the way, Mister Meatball. I thought, let's see, how did our friend do on these puts? He bought a hundred thousand of these. It's got to be sitting pretty right now. And you know what? As I mentioned in the rundown, there's still 275,000 of these puts open. So as far as I can tell, our friend has not let them go yet. Uh, he bid up the OI. He kind of created the OI. It was not much. He, he made it up to 100,000. Uh, more has trickled in since. We have seen a few chunks go up that were blocks of not quite this size, but close to it. So there is a chance he puts them up. But I went and looked. A bunch went up on June 6th. Looked like that was a June 16, 15 put roll, the rolling from the 16s down ah. to the 15s. So I don't think that was our friend getting out. So as far as I can tell, I don't think our friend has gotten out. So he bought 100 grand for nine cents and he's still wearing them. So he's going for max profit, apparently. He wants his 10x or 90 cents, maybe. I don't know. But uh, I guess more power to him. But uh, intriguing stuff. Listeners, if you bought these, where would you be getting out? Where would you be working? I'm curious. If you had 100,000 of them, 
Would you have gotten out already or would you still be working them? Our friend here is still working them. So, and he can't say really he, you know, bought, hedged them against, did any sort of gamma scalping it because there was no gamma on a 15 put in October when the VIX is 30. <laughs> you got nothing for this. So these were about as far out of the money as it got almost. Uh, so yeah, just a, a very intriguing trade. I guess we have to tip our cap to our friend. If he didn't do that ridiculous trade, it wouldn't have inspired us to better him and in the process put these on for ourselves. So there we go. We tip our cap to you, sir or madam, who bought all these ridiculous June 15 puts that kicked off this this palooza of content, the gift that keeps on giving here on the show. Let's see if we can find any other trades going up out there today, listeners. Like we said, half a million contracts on the tape right now in Vixland. And uh, looks like some action out there on the 15 strike yet again. Uh, 50,000, almost 51,000 of the July 15 puts, July 15s going up right now I'll have to go dig in to see what those are trading for right now is it time to go back in on the 15 strike i don't think so at least not for right now not for me listeners but maybe you like these uh number two thirty five thousand of the our old friend the june 15 puts maybe some other folks getting out of dodge like me today or maybe they're piling in for more you know pigs get fed hogs get slaughtered at the end of the day listeners number three twenty eight thousand of the july 17 puts number four twenty six thousand of the sep 22 calls Interesting. And number five, 24,000. Oh, here we go. The June 14 puts getting a wee bit more out of the money out there. Uh, Mr. Meatball, you've seen all these puts go up today. Uh, are you intrigued by more downside here in VIX? I know you dumped your June 15s. Do you like the July 15s here? You like, I think, June 14s. It might be a little bit aggressive. Maybe you like those. Any of these float in your boat, sir? 15s. Oh, sorry. Which for ones? 40, for 40 cents, and I'm sitting on them. I've been accumulating the July 13s for a dime, Mark. Oh, those I don't hate. I, think, I thought you were going to say June 14s. I was like, wow, you're on, you're on that. Boat. No, no, no. That's July, July I like. <laughs> and I'm actually looking at, you know, since we talked about the fact that, that, that those puts are so bid, right, that, or that those futures are so bid, the VIX is trading 13.68. Uh, the October 15 puts are 49 cents. Uh, that's an interesting little buy. Um, the 16s are, are up to 90 cents. Now I initially bought, you know, this was my big trade. I was long 500 of the 16 puts in September for an average price of about 18 cents. They're 90, 95 cents. Now that was a nice trade. Um, I, I still think that you could see vol pull into, like if we get a slow little pullback, a breather here, we could, you know, we could see S and P down, VIX down uh, next week, and see maybe VIX approach twelve. You know, I was looking at some more downside in July. I was actually looking at that strike you were talking about. So, just to make you feel better, I'm working. Great some, minds think alike. I'm working some of the July 13 puts right now, sir. So I'll let you know if I get filled even later in the. I like that for a dime. I don't mind that level at all. I put some of our ill-gotten June 15 put gains back to work, right, for the benefit of the masses out here. Intriguing stuff. Are you in some downside right now? Listener, speaking of things that you're in, we just put a little flash poll out there right now. We were talking earlier about modest bid to the calls. Not really crazy out there in spite of the call dex numbers for today. That's today, obviously. All, looking at the skew longer term, there's no bid really to the calls. Uh, so are you taking advantage of lower VIX right now and modest call skew to trade some stock substitution in SPX or SPY? Just simple yes or no. That's a little flash poll that's live right now at Options. So if you're listening live, go to the go to uh, the top of our Twitter feed. You can vote right there. If you're listening after the fact, we'll try to keep it open long enough for you folks to vote later on on the podcast. But a good reason why you should be following us at Options. You can make your voice heard in a lot of these types of polls. And guess what? You guys vote in these things. You're not the only one looking at these. A lot of people in the business watch these polls and see which way you guys think on a bunch of different topics. So. If you want to influence some things that are going on in the world of options, make your voices heard in these polls because people pay attention. Well, let's go on out now to Thursday. Thursday, decently active day. Obviously, we are post-Fed. We're seeing some paper rumble through. Not quite the explosive post-Fed days we've seen in the past, you know, 1.4 million, anything like that. But a respectable day, even if it didn't really hit the ADV. Uh, 787,000 contracts on the tape for VIX on Thursday. So again, nothing to sneeze at out there. Uh, the big dog on Thursday, 81,000 of the July 21s. 
followed by two, 39,000 of the July 20s. Number three, 35,000 of the July 25s. Number four, 30,000 of the June 15 puts, our old friend. The folks who bailed on them yesterday, I feel bad. They got a much worse level. And then number five, 29, almost 30,000. Oh, again, the June 14 puts. I'll have to go look and see what those are trading for, too. Those are You like those? Listen, you like the June 14 puts, or is that perhaps a bit of a bridge too far? Now you're coming up against it. 14 put expiration isn't that far away listeners so you need to have some real you need to have them take the weekend again we are coming into a holiday so maybe some folks banking on that but again market makers not idiots they know the calendar they'll take out their decay accordingly and so if you're expecting that holiday to pay for all those puts i don't know if that's going to do it for you by the way vix 14 puts about thirty thousand of them Going up out there yesterday. Let's 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 look really quickly right now with those. Those fourteen puts are quarter bid, quarter bid at twenty six cents. I don't know, listeners. Twenty five cents pick them. Which way would you go <laughs> on those on those June fourteen puts? Remember, clock is ticking on those bad boys. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't think I'm diving in there. But we shall see. Wednesday, seven hundred thirteen thousand contracts on the tape. The big dog. About sixty three thousand of the June sixteen calls. So getting to the upside, you can get all you want of those right now, listeners, for a whopping 18 cents. So what would you rather buy, the June 14 puts for about a quarter or the 16 calls for 18 cents? Got to pick one, listeners. Number two, 44,000 of the June 17s. Number three, 36,000 of the June 19s. Number four, 29,000 of the July 45s. Intriguing. And then number five, almost 29,000 as well of the July 30s. Looks like a bit of a vertical. If it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, probably a vertical. July 30, 45. You know, it's not the size of our June 30, 40, but it has the whiff. It has the air of it. Strikes a little bit different, obviously, but not that dissimilar from our friend out there. So maybe some related or perhaps inspired by paper going up out there on Wednesday. Tuesday, obviously, a day where a lot of people were watching the Fed closely, and we actually saw a lot of paper. Some days like that, you know, the Tuesday, the first day of the Fed meeting, people are usually keeping their powder dry. Not a lot of size going up, but that wasn't the case this week. Nearly a million contracts, 996,000 contracts going up in Vixland this week. The big dog, 54,000 of the July 24s. And a number two, 51,000 of the AUG 23s. Number three, 50,000 pretty much exactly of the October 25s. Interesting as well. Number four, 41,000 of the July 25s and rounding out the top five, 32K of the July 17 puts. Those are obviously looking pretty decent right now if you're buying a lot of those bad boys. And Monday leading into the Fed week, ball starting to creep in a little bit again. Maybe some upside back on the table for a brief period out there. Decent paper on Monday as well. 814,000 contracts. The big dog out there, 75,000 exactly. Of the October 50s, five O's, followed by number two, 73,000 of the July 22s, number three, 43,000 of the June 16 calls, number four, 39,000 of the AUG 22s, and rounding out the top five on a decently active Monday, 37,000 of our old friend yet again, the June 15 puts. Folks bailing on those probably there as well. Maybe loading up on some more. Maybe they wanted to get more at around a half a buck. Intriguing stuff. Mr. Meatball, we talked about the June 15 put saga. We talked about some. A little bit more downside going out in July, maybe the uh, the 13 puts and all that fun. Outside of those, anything else catching your eye in this uh, pretty aggressive volume week for VIX options? Yeah, you know, like I said, they've been very busy. Uh, a lot of June trading, tons of June trading. Um, July starting to heat up. We are seeing, uh, you know, some some decent call volume and put volume. The July 15 puts are going crazy. The July 17 puts are, are pretty darn busy. And then you've got some upside trading in July. A um, little surprised we haven't seen um, a lot more SEP. We do have a big buyer today of the SEP 22s. Uh, kind of interesting. Um, you know, like I said, I, I think we're at a spot where you're going to start seeing some... Uh, we're at a, a low enough vol that, that we should start seeing... Uh, call traders, del- you know, dabbling in the volatility index. What you would think uh, the top 10 most active would show us that at least the legacy call position is still open for size out there. Not a lot of size new puts able to knock them from their pedestal yet, but we shall see. 
Uh, let's keep on rolling. Let's get on out to the once and future and now present Dr. Bix's favorite holding. He's always giddy whenever this one hits a new all-time high, which it has been doing a lot lately. So he's been a pretty giddy fellow of late. Of course, we're talking about our inverse friend, S. Vix, 25 and a half up another about two-thirds of a buck today, hitting yet another pretty much uh, all-time high, I think yesterday, 25 and three quarters yesterday. So this thing just continues to just rally ho like it's like it just has no tomorrow. <laughs> just just keeps going up. Uh, in fact, we had a, a listener on Twitter, Gambler, one of our regular listeners to to Volview, saying those SVIX step 35s don't look so ridiculous now. Huh? I remember laughing when you brought those up on volatility views, but whoever bought those may end up getting the last laugh. Yeah, we we were talking about those. We'll talk about them again in a few minutes. And yeah, those did seem kind of, I won't say absurd, but let's say optimistic <laughs> when we first started talking about those, oh, a month or two ago. And now here we are, a little bit different regime, not quite at the 35 strike. But as we all know, in the world of options, you don't need to get there to make money on a trade. So intriguing stuff. Let's see. Today, decent paper, 1,600 contracts on the tape. Like we said, at 25 and a half, up two and three quarters of handles from our last show. So a nice little run here for SVIX. Uh, the ADV continuing to move ever so slightly in the right direction. 1,462 contracts is the ADB. That's up about 100 contracts. So it continues to gain some paper. It would it would benefit from the onset of weeklies. That would help. Of course, I get it. Not a lot of liquidity. Market makers not incentivized to add a near-dated contract. It's kind of a bit of a catch-22. You need liquidity to add more contracts, but you're not going to grow the liquidity without more contracts. So again, bit of a catch-22 there. But I think it would be nice to add some weeklies and SVIX. That would certainly go a long way towards improving the use case, at least for a lot of our listeners out there. In terms of the size positions out there in SVIX, let's do a quick top five. Number five, about 1,000 of the June 11 puts. Number four, 1,100 of the July 27s. Also optimistic, but not quite as optimistic as they used to be. Number three, as Gambler was referring to, 1,100 of the, excuse me, the SEP, 35 calls. Yeah, we laughed about those quite a bit not too long ago, and here they are now looking far more relevant than they ever did listeners. Number two, 1,700 of the June 8 puts and the top position in SVIX. Yet again, this 8 strike has some sort of magnetism to it. It just draws people to it because the number one size position in SVIX or options right now, 2,200 of the July 8 puts. So for whatever reason, folks like themselves some 8 puts out here in SVIX. Uh, Mr. Meatball, what are your thoughts on the continued upside of SVIX? And do you agree with our our listener here? Those SEP 35s, not quite as ridiculous as they once were. Sir. No, they're not. Um, although, like I said, I think we're due for some sort of potential, um, you know, probably July time frame. I think we could see, see some tor- sort of event. You and I have talked about uh, the Gamma Bomb and what's what's building. Um you know, the, the call volume in or the total volume of zero DT options continues to go up and up and up. And, you know, you know, Mark, these people are degenerate premium sellers, right? So the, the issue that we're starting to run into is imagine scenario. These guys in October were able to sell premium 2% out of the money and, and collect a lot of dollars. Now to get those same dollars, you're having to sell three quarters of a percent out of the money or less. Uh, and that, uh, as that happens and as volume increases, increases, I think we could have a little bit of uh, a little XIV on our hands here uh, in the coming days. You know, it, it's the, not like tomorrow, but I, I think it's less than a court, qu- less than three months away. Ah, the old gamma bombs coming home to roost. Funny. You should mention that that is kind of the subject of our question of the week which we will get to in a little bit here on the show, listeners. Are you still writing that premium? Are you still selling covered calls in this environment? We'll get to the results of that in a little bit as well. Before that, we keep let's keep running down some of our other friends out here. Uh, Uvix, Mark, they just reverse split this to, what was it, a little bit south of 25? And I said yeah. even then, I was like, this is, this is a waste of everyone's time. We're just going to be talking about this again in a couple of months. Lo and behold, Uvix five and a half. 
what the hell are we talking about again? So what, what are they doing out here, Mark? What's going on? Uh, they'll, they're getting set to reverse split. Speaking of reverse splits, UBXY is going to reverse split next Friday. Yes, that will be nice because that one kind of uh, circle in the bowl, 215 as we're talking right now, down another yeah. nearly, nearly it's half untra- a point. They're both, they're both untradeable. Um, so UBXY splitting, what is it, 20 for one? Something like that? 10 for one? I wish. Only 10 for one. Yeah, they're doing 10 for one. Um, so it'll be 20 bucks again. And it, guess what? It'll probably be a short until it isn't. Now, I get that these product issuers have other masters they need to serve than just us, the options degenerates who want to fade their product using options. Right? So I understand that. But that said, do you want to just reverse split every two to three months? Because that's what you're doing with these anemic reverse splits. I mean... Maybe they do. Maybe they don't mind that process because if you reverse split UBIX back to 20 again and they're doing that with UBXY, they're going to at this point, they're going to reverse split it to 21 and a half. It stays at this level. Guess what we're going to be talking about again in a few months, listeners? UBXY back below the 10 handle and UBIX similar levels and doing this dance all over again. So I don't know. Maybe for the issuers, maybe they don't mind doing it. You think it would be a hassle and an expense that they don't need to deal with on a quarterly basis but hey who am i to question these folks out there (laughs) i'm just a degenerate options trader at the end of the day but i I don't know i think if i issued these products i would want to see a little bit more juice out there so i don't have to do this over and over again there has to be some happy medium between obviously the underlying price getting too high to reduce your volume but also providing some incentive to people to trade this on the option side and also you don't have to keep doing this dance Every couple of months. Say la vie. That's where we are. Ubix five and a half down 1.6 from our last show. 6,000 contracts on the tape. So yeah, not really blowing the world part with volume. The ADV is only 11,000. That's down a thousand from our last show. So as it continues to erode, uh, the, the ADV not catching the whole point of the reverse split was to kind of boost that ADV back up again and didn't quite get there. So we'll see. Maybe they'll take that to heart the next time and reverse it to. A better level. UVXY, same deal, 215, down about half a point right now. 85,000 contracts on the tape as we had kicked off the show. Let's see if that number has popped up much since we started talking out here, listeners. And let's see, UVXY, right now they have put up 102,000 contracts. So a little bit more, not even 20,000 more. Uh, the ADV, 178,000. It's actually down 2,000. So this anemic underlying level obviously hitting the options volume as well. What's the use case for a $2 underlying with the options? It, it's, it drops every day that the underlying drops. So it's in their best interest, of course, to uh, reverse split this thing. They are on the 23rd listeners, 10 for one, not 20 for one. That's what we were all hoping for. But I suppose beggars cannot be choosers in this scenario. It might be a good question of the week <laughs> coming up as well. All these 10 for one, rever- is this enough? Or are we just wasting a whole bunch of time out there? It might be a fun question of the week. Producers take note. Maybe a fun question of the week uh, for down the road. In terms of top positions, let's look really quickly. Uh, let's just do a top three in UBIX. Uh, number three, 2,500 of the June 9 calls. Number two, 2,500 as well of the June 9 puts. So a bit of a nine straddle on out there, given the fact that we're hanging out at a five handle. Uh, the puts looking good. The calls not so much, given the way these things trade. Those are usually people getting long premium on these. If, if past is prologue, so I'm I'm going to wager the nine call folks probably have a bit of a sad face on. And the number one position out there in Ubix right now, forty eight hundred of the June eight halves. Again, all that going out today. So eight halves and nines probably not going to get there. Nine puts though, looking pretty decent. A uh, UBXY, the top position out there, seventy five thousand. Of the June two halves. <laughs> so those are expiring today. And again, those could be overwritten. If past is prologue, probably not. So you got 75,000 sad faces on the two half strike in UBXY going out today. I chuckle because we've all been there. I've been there. UBXY can be a heartbreaker. It'll dance with your strike right until the last moment and then just rip the rug out from under you and just leave you holding nothing but ashes in your hand. At the end of the day, in this case, these June two halves, you had a little bit more time. You probably saw the writing on the wall, so they could have maybe gotten out earlier. But nonetheless, looks like some sad faces there right behind it. 58,000 of the June threes. 
So those probably also some sad faces out there. And then number three in UBXY, the June two puts 38,000 of those. So those, those are in play. I don't think we're going to get there today, though. So again, UBXY, the heartbreaking monster that it is, rips the heart out of the two halves and the threes. And then also, just for good measure, rips the heart out of the two put holders as well. So intriguing stuff. Once again, you, even at this low level, UBXY, making widows and orphans of us all out there. Uh, Mr. Meatball, anything else catching your eye in those two, sir? Uh, no, just I'm excited for the reverse split. That'll make that product tradable again, which is what I always like. So I would like that thing to be tradable again so that we can start talking about all the fun UVXY stuff we're doing. And UVIX for that matter. I love UVIX. I just like UVIX when it's 20, not when it's 5. <laughs> not when it's 5, yeah. Well, a product you do love these days, Mr. Meatball, is a VXX. Doing his, oh, yeah. thing, doing his thing again. 27 and a half, down three and a half points from our yeah. last show. So starting starting to look like the old VXX. Sir. I know this is starting to, to attract you again. You've been up to anything out there in VXX since last we chatted? Uh, maybe I bought some puts that expire in July. Maybe. Um, and maybe they're already up a lot of money because I bought them yesterday when Vol was screaming higher uh, with a little short position. So... Uh, yeah, I, I am dabbling in here. Uh, I think this thing is uh, in the, you know, at, these reverse splits are the best opportunity to dive in and uh, start playing the short vol game while you can play it. Yeah, VXX, you know, I, I said before I had washed my hands of this thing, but I'm lately starting to second guess that given all this. This is starting to do what it's supposed to again, listeners. So that's intriguing. Again, don't put the house on this. Don't put the college fund on this. But you want to dabble in this. You want to you want to throw some bones out here on this one. Again, it could blow up at any time. Barclays could go crazy again at any time. So bear that in mind. But if you're okay with that, down three and a half points in just a couple of weeks again. If you want a way to play some downside erosion and right now, you know, looking at UVIX, looking at UBXY, both of those kind of in the toilet, not a lot of juice for Playing downside there, you, you could do worse than looking at some downside strategies in VXX. Seems like people are starting to wake up to that fact. The ADB is 64,000 contracts. That's up 13,000 from our last show. So numbers starting to reflect the fact that the VXX may be starting to return to its original purpose. Uh, again, it's still a far cry from what it used to be. Well over 400,000 contracts threatening VIX on a daily basis. Nowhere near that. I don't know if it'll ever be there again, quite frankly. But 63000 on the tape today, so it seems like they're going to threaten it. Uh, the big positions out there, let's do a top three here as well. 10000 of the AUG, 22 puts. Interesting. Number two, 12000 of the, oh, uh, these are the pre-split adjusted June 80s. Those are going the way today. Thank goodness all this pre-split adjusted stuff going out today. You don't have to deal with it anymore. And the big position out there right now, 19000 of the June 60s, also going out today. Uh, VXX, we do see some premium buyers. We also see some overriders out there. So I might, I'm going to be charitable and assume they overwrote the hell out of these. And they got a ton of juice for them, in which case, congratulations to you, sir or madam. As we keep on rolling out here, not a ton on the earnings front. We had Oracle this week, Leonard Holmes, Kroger, and Adobe this week, as well as some others. If you want to see all the data for yourselves, theoptionsinsider.com is the place to go to click the tires and light the fires out there. The earnings season hanging out right now. At let's see, the earnings season hanging out right now at 90. I'll just tick back up 96%. So that is exactly in line with our long term average of over of 96%, which we've been tracking since way before the pandemic. So this season coming in exactly as expectations right now, which is kind of interesting. Uh, we'll see if that number remains the same or if we have some more adjustments out there. But intriguing stuff. You can find all that for yourselves. Theoptionsinsider.com is the place to go to learn more as we go really quickly into a little bit of the old volatility voicemail. It's time to share your thoughts and opinions with your fellow volatility traders. It's time to check the volatility voicemail. Make your voice heard by dialing 779-669-4VOL. Posting a comment on the optionsinsider.com, sending an email to questions at the optionsinsider.com, or posting your questions to twitter.com/options. 
or facebook.com slash the options insider. All right, everybody, welcome to the Vol voicemail. Your chance to get at us here on the old show. Let's go out to the live first. Uh, Mr. Meatball, a lot of people are liking what we were talking about earlier with those July 13 puts. Options Queen, our very prescient listener, she says, I like those July 13 puts. I'm working to buy some as well. Uh, Nichols, he said, same. I thought I saw that bid growing. You folks are pennying me on that bid, aren't you? That's you folks out there. See, our own listeners, Mr. Meatball. Front running me on unbelievable, some of these words. unbelievable. What kind of thanks is that? You know, I bring them to the dance and they jump right in front of me. How, that's the thanks I get out here for you folks out there. You know, no, no, unbelievable, love. no love. <laughs> we'll see if we all get filled at the end of the day, uh, listeners. Let's go out to some of our questions of the week right now. I said we put out a quick flash poll, uh, Mr. Meatball. That's kind of a fun one. Uh, we said quite simply, are you taking advantage of this lower VIX and modest call skew? To trade some stock substitution in SPX, yes or no? And then our actual question of the week, which is running right now, you can still vote on if you're listening. If you're listening after the fact on the podcast, probably going to miss it. It's going to expire by then. If you're listening live, you get in there now. At options, the place to go. We're asking you, uh, VIX is continuing to drop. Rates are continuing to go mostly up. Maybe not this week, but in other environments they are. Uh, so it's challenging to generate income using options. While the rewards for cash are substantial, which raises the question, are you still selling covered calls in this environment? Uh, yes, you're just selling them closer to at the money. That's what Mark was talking about earlier. Or yes, I'm okay with getting less income. Or no, I'm not selling you anymore because there's just too much risk or I'm already in cash. Forget about it. Or no, there's not enough income for me. So uh, Mr. Meatball, which way do you think our audience is going? Are they still selling calls? Yes or no? And then B, do you think they're taking advantage of lower VIX and modest call skew to put on some stock substitution in the S, sir? Two questions for you. Uh, I'm going to say no on the stock substitution and yes on the still selling covered calls. Wow. Okay, flip both of those and you are completely correct, sir. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, 75% of our audience right now is saying they are taking advantage of lower VIX and modest call skew to trade some stock substitution. So uh, maybe they're a little bit spooked at these valuations. Like, who can blame them? You know, so that, that makes some sense. Vol is low. There are definitely worse times to be doing a little bit of the old stock substitution. That's a flash poll, listeners. So that might be still live by the time you listen to the podcast, but uh, maybe not. And then Mr. Meatball on the, are you still selling covered calls in this environment? It's been contentious, but right now, Almost exactly two-thirds, 65%, if you add them together, are saying no. Uh, 45% saying there's too much Uh risk right now, or they're just in cash. They don't want to sell covered calls. Or 20% saying no, there's not enough income. So again, add those two together, 65% of our audience saying no. Uh, Then 20% saying, yes, I'm okay with less income. And 15% saying, "Just I'm just selling closer to at the money. So taking a little bit more risk to make that same amount of income, which is never ideal either. Uh, we also had people chiming in. Oh, a gambler again saying, I'm so upset over my SVIX shares getting called away at 17. <laughs> Don't know what I was thinking. So he's obviously doing the Russell Rhodes trade of doing a lot of overwrites against his underlying. Hey, you know, I don't think anyone had a, a new 52 week high of 25 and three quarters or whatever it is in their on their bingo card gambler. So you can't be mad. You're making money at the end of the day. I don't know what you sold those for, but. I'm sure you're sitting on some profit. So at the end of the day, it's better to make money than lose money. So, yeah, you left some on the table. But, you know, I have a feeling you'll have an opportunity to do that trade again. So not the end of the world there, gambler. Enjoy your enjoy your riches, what you have, as you keep on rolling right on into the crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future. And reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the Crystal Ball. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Crystal Ball. The most difficult, the most dangerous portion of the show. And you know what? We had to guess this from two weeks ago, listeners. So add an extra layer of difficulty. Going out one week is hard enough. Anyone who's done it with us knows. Going out two weeks Nigh on impossible. Nonetheless, we did it for you folks, for your trading information, education, probably a little bit of enjoyment, a little bit of sniggering at us, <laughs> trying to wrestle with the Vol gods for two weeks out. Uh, my grasp was, I think, tenuous to say the least. I thought maybe we would have the Fed and maybe we'd have a little bit of a shock from the Fed as a result. So 
we'd have a little bit more juice on the screen. I was feeling a slightly over 17 handle, 17.05. Uh, clearly not the case at about a 13.60 as we're coming to the end of the show. So Val continuing to erode. You, Mr. Meatball, doing your palindromic nonsense was at a 14.41. So much closer than I, still no winner, winner, chicken dinner. And we were also joined by uh, the once in future and now present Dr. Bix. He was at a 16 and three quarters. So he was, excuse me, also feeling a little bit of extra vol post fed. None of us coming to pass. Let's look through really quickly some of our closer live listeners. I see six, a lot of 16. Hell, Z23 had a 15 hand. That's not bad. Options queen, 15 and a half. I see a lot of 16 and 17s and above. Our producers will go through the rest if you send them in. Uh, after the fact, listeners. So we'll see if anyone had a 1360 plus or minus a tenth of a point, you're a winner, winner, chicken dinner. But uh, alas, none of us on the panel had it. Uh, Mr. Meatball, you are you were the closest. So I will allow you to choose. You want to go first or last? Um, I'll go first. I'll All go right. first. Have at it, sir. The floor is yours. Uh, we're going to go 1331. Interesting. 1331 is where the VIX will end next week. Do I, let's see. If I don't want that to come to pass, it depends if I'm filled on these puts or not. <laughs> if I'm filled on them, then yes, I, I robustly want that to come to fruition. And then some. I want more. If all our listeners penny me, then maybe not so much. I want them to be spited. <laughs> I'm petty that way. I'm just kidding, of course. I love you all. All right. So 1331 for the meatball. I've been leaning upside a lot. It has not done well for me out here. Listeners. Ooh, I, I don't even want to say a 12 handle. I don't want to speak that into the ether because we all know what happens when VIX hits a 12 handle. Nothing good. So I'm going to say a little bit in the other direction, but not crazy. Not crazy. I'm going to say we're at a 14, uh, 60 or 65. I'm going to say six, six even, 60 out there. So 1460. For this time next week. What's your market listeners? Get them in. Oh, options queen. She's pretty good. She's saying 1420 for next week. So she's on the little bit of the upside tip as well. Listen on the podcast. Listeners, get out there. Get your get your submissions in. If you're within our margin of victory, fabulous prizes can be yours. All right, listeners. That's going to do it for us this week. But before we go, Mr. Meatball, sir, if folks want to check out all of your volatility musings, where should they go? What should they do? Yeah, just go to optionpit.com. Um, you know, Mark, you know what I, I, I said on, on uh, my, my Monday blog? You said Mark Longo is the handsomest man I've ever seen. No, I said the at the money straddle with all the stuff in front of us is way too cheap. It was, uh, you know how much the straddle was at the beginning of the week? It was, it was 60 bucks. 60 bucks. Uh, in, in, on, remember at the beginning of the week, you know where we were on, uh, you know where we closed on Friday? So here we are. Let's see. We closed on Friday at 14 at 40. Let's see. 42. We closed Friday at 42, uh, 42.98.86. We more than we're now 1440, uh, 440.27. So this, it, we more than doubled the, the cost of the straddle. Um, near dated options continue to be, I think, a value. There you go. Near dated options. You want more insight like that, listeners? Optionpit.com is the place to go. We got to get on out of here. If you're on the on demand side, listeners, that will conclude our broadcast week. I want to thank you for joining us throughout the week. Hope you had a good time. We're going to be off on Monday, obviously, for the holiday. So no option block, no crypto rundown, but our regular slate of content outside of that coming at you next week of course if you're on the pro side hang out we'll be back in a little bit i'm seeing some other guests coming in 1370 14 half 1610 our live listeners all over the place i love it that's what makes the market get your get your guesses in if you want to join the pro you want to get so your guesses in live you want to play along live you want to win fabulous prizes you want to get access uh, to options oddities and 200 plus other shows that are on that feed exclusively for you the options insider.com slash pro is the place to go Got to get on out of here. Have a great weekend, listeners, if you're on the on-demand side. We'll see you back here on Tuesday for more content on the on-demand. And then throughout the rest of the week, until next Friday, another episode of Volatility Views. Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. 
For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>